Today we're talking all about the pros and the cons of living in Norfolk, Virginia, and we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area. It's Norfolk, Virginia Beach, all the areas around Virginia Beach. And I do videos every week about helping people relocate and live what it's like to live in these cities. And so today we're talking about Norfolk, the pros and cons of living in Norfolk, Virginia. There's a lot to talk about. This is an updated real time 2021 version. So you know what to expect when you move here. If you love my videos, please, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithms. It really helps my channel out a lot. And I would greatly appreciate it. But while I love Norfolk, I love Norfolk so much, but at the same time, there are some realities that I think are very important to talk about because it gives the balanced approach of what this area is actually like. There are some very specific things that are drawbacks or things I would definitely make sure you know before moving here or living here uh, that does change possibly what whether or not you want to move here or not. And so that's why I want to talk about the cons as well. Now I want to talk specifically first about the the area in general of Norfolk and how it feels in one side or the other. Number one is you'll find that on the east side and the north side, it feels completely different than what it feels like on the west side. On the west side, you've got areas like Ghent, Larchmont, anything down Colley Avenue and Hampton Boulevard, places like Lock Haven, up near Old Dominion Uni University. This whole area feels great, like over near, and near Granby Street or anything near this water section on the, on the west side feels, has that kind of like that, that old style, like in, in Ghent, for example, there are lots of bells Belgian uh, properties and this that real nice craftsman Victorian style houses all through this section. Then you go to the other side of Norfolk and you've got something totally different. Houses, a lot of them built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, you got a lot of places that just kind of feel industrial, commercial, some great neighborhoods in there too, but it also feels totally different. It kind of feels kind of drab in some places. And so based on where you're gonna be moving to Norfolk or living in Norfolk, it might feel totally different. So don't just necessarily assume that when you're going to Norfolk, everything is the same. It really, really depends. So con number one is the flooding. I've talked about the flooding on a bunch of videos about Norfolk and other areas too. This this can be a big deal. People will talk to you about the idea that Norfolk has a lot of flooding. Well, that is very true, but it depends on where in Norfolk uh, specifically, and that influences how much you need to prepare. For example, on the western side and northwestern side of the city, that's where you get the most risk for flooding, generally speaking. For example, places like Larchmont, that neighborhood up in the northwestern corner, going south into parts of Ghent, very localized spots, it can flood, especially in specific roadways and intersections. So what I found is that it does definitely change and influence where you might have to park your car, uh, where you might be driving from place to place uh, for a commute. Uh, it does influence your day-to-day -day life and it can. Ocean View. Ocean View has some spots that can really be a problem. Um, so it depends on where um, the water is in relation to your house, how the wind's blowing, um, where the sea level is, and how close you are to some of that water. So it's a very dynamic thing. But I will say that the floods in general over towards that northwestern side have gotten progressively a little bit worse over time. So it is something I'm watching and it does concern me if there is nothing that's gonna be done about it in the next you know, 10, 15 years. So, And there is a federal grant too of $112 million to improve areas in, that have poor drainage like in some, some of these neighborhoods. In addition to that, the Norfolk City has also provided another resource for people to look up houses online and see how flooding could influence that specific address. And I'll drop that information below, norfolk.floodriskcenter.com center.com is the website that the uh, Norfolk City has created. And also, if you're looking to buy a house in this area, different flood zones influence whether or not you have to pay for flood insurance or not, and if it's a, or if it's a very dry area. So, and when you're looking for a house, that's one factor to keep in mind is talking to your agent and make sure the agent finds out if the house that you live in or, or wanting to live in uh, might require flood insurance and find out what the floodplains are. Number two is the school system. So, uh, the reputation, uh, I would say. So, for example, uh, uh, Granby, Maury, Norview, Lake Taylor, these are schools in the high school districts in Norfolk. And a lot of these are not ranked very high by, for example, uh, greatschools.net, niche.com, you'll see them ranked pretty low. Now I will say though, if you're looking into elementary schools, middle schools, uh, there are some specific ones that are much more high demand and ranked really high. So it's not across the board, but this is a big drawback and people that do want to live in Norfolk often will go into the private school uh, uh, realm and pick places like Norfolk Academy. 
Norfolk uh, Collegiate, Norfolk Christian. There are some others as well uh, in Norfolk. Now the next is crime. We've talked about crime before, and it's, as a real estate agent, it's hard to talk about this in a, an appropriate way. But I will say that crime in general is high in some places in Norfolk, and depending on where you live, you might be close to an area that has higher crime statistics as well. That does not mean the whole city has an issue. When you're looking for houses, you'll see some places that are just that on statistically, they will look like there's nothing happening, and it's true. You go just a few blocks over, and you might not find the same thing. There's a randomness of how crime is in Norfolk. There are a lot of places that are, like look at the crime statistics, incredibly low. You'll see some that are incredibly high. And you'll see some that, that look great, and then if you go down the street, it's not that way. So keep this in mind, but I would not blanket the whole area and say that, oh my gosh, the whole area has an issue, or the whole area is fine. You just have to do your research to know like what the areas are like, and talking to your uh, friends, people that might live in that area, kind of getting an idea of what uh, the area actually is like. One place I like to use a lot is Trulia's Crime Maps. They're helpful because they have a color-coded uh, options. You can see distinctly like what areas actually have more condensed crime. You can see also how it differentiates quickly. You can go down the street and you see a dark blue, which might be higher crime, and then you go just several streets down and all of a sudden it's not. So it's really helpful to see that color coding. So next is the traffic. So traffic around here can be really annoying, especially during rush hour. You'll see a lot of areas that are just off of the interstates, um, like a lot of highways, like uh, secondary roads. You see a lot more cars in traffic, and especially you're talking about near tunnels. So the Midtown Tunnel is going between Norfolk and uh, Portsmouth. That area can congest a lot on Hampton Boulevard. Also, you can go over towards the 64 interchange on the east side. That can easily back up as well. Now, for rush hour between like you know 7:30 to like 8:45 in the morning, as well as about 3:30, 4 o'clock to about 5:30, 6 o'clock in the evening, those two times can get really congested in Norfolk. So when you do your research about how far you need to drive from place to place, and you know, just factor in rush hour, adding some extra minutes there, and some backups uh, can happen too. Now next is the shopping, the grocery store specifically. So I am a weirdly a grocery store nut. I do love my good grocery stores, and so the reality is with, with Norfolk, there aren't many really good grocery stores to me. There are some, they're more like local, um, smaller places, you'll, you'll see some food lines, um, you'll see a couple Harris Teeters around as well, as well as some Walmarts too, and a fresh market, but you won't see as much of anything. So, you know, if you go into Virginia Beach, you'll see Kroger, Harris Teeter, uh, Wegmans, uh, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, but you'll see a lot of those in a lot of pockets, but Norfolk doesn't have as much of that. So you don't have as quick access to a lot of grocery stores or as easy access to a lot of different options that are like even more like the nicer grocery stores to me. Another specific one is talking about MacArthur Center Mall itself. MacArthur Center Mall was, is, was built in downtown Norfolk. It was the flagship mall to me and had some of the best stores. It was a super nice mall inside. Apple, J. Crew, Nordstrom, uh, Coach, like Michael Kors, like a lot of these uh, really premier uh, stores all were in MacArthur Center and it was like the place to go, the place to go for malls anywhere in the area. To me, I had a great uh, theater too. I'd go all the time in the late 90s, early 2000s. It was awesome. And it's right in the middle of downtown and you kind of felt like you had a little downtown experience going to the mall. So newsflash, malls aren't so popular anymore. Uh, so uh, now we've got this massive building um, that has some stores in it, but but some of those stores are leaving. For example, when I said J. Crew and Apple, those two are leaving or are gone. Um, and other larger stores, you're finding that this mall, which used to be amazing 20 years ago, is now what's becoming a possibly hollowed out mall, uh, one of the many uh, like it that are slowly going by the wayside. There's talk now that it might be torn down by about 2030. So between now or 2021, now and the end of the decade, that might be a totally different area. Now, if the mall stays there for a while and it becomes less and less of a thing, that section in that downtown area could be affected by it as well because it's a big spot and it's a very important um, central spot in downtown Norfolk. Whatever they put in there, if it's nice, it really could actually add value and intrigue to the rest of that section. So I'm interested to see what happens with, with MacArthur Center Mall. Now, another thing I've talked about, and I'm, I'm a huge sports fan, but there are no major league, uh, four major sports teams here. Baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. We try to bring baseball into the area, as well as hockey. 
It has not worked. And um, we have AAA baseball in Norfolk. We also have minor league hockey too. We also have college football Old Dominion, which is nice, but it's just not the same. I have been longing for a four major sports team for a long time and it's still not coming. Honestly, unless the infrastructure changes and someone's willing to really risk a lot of money to put a team here, I'm not expecting it. And so that's the one big, to me, the biggest downside to being in this area is there is no major league uh, four major sports team here. It might not happen. Now, one more thing I think that is also important is the parking in like, for example, downtown in Ghent on the west side can be very difficult. And so my wife and I both used to live in Ghent for a little while ourselves and street parking is a lot of times the most common form of parking and it's not easy. And so you'll find spots that, you know, you got, you can only park in certain spots during certain times of the day, street sweeping is, is involved. And then you don't, might not want to park in certain spots because of how the water, the flooding situation might be in that area. So you kind of have to be very careful about parking on the street. So being off the street is really helpful and having a house that has its own dedicated parking spot off the road, super helpful. The rest of Norfolk, you know, you, it's more of a neighborhood feel and like more uh, businesses. But on the west side, got a lot of areas that are just more designed for street parking and it can be really, really cramped. Now let's go to the pros of Norfolk. A lot of this stuff I love. Let's get into it. Number one is the culture. For example, Ghent, downtown uh, Norfolk. In that west side, you've got places that I love like The Hague. Places in Ghent, Colley Avenue, uh, Colonial Avenue, 21st Street has a ton of restaurants in it. And also Free Mason, which is just into the, it's just west of that downtown section. This area is amazing for restaurants, for just the nightlife in general. You're near the water. There's an area called Town Point Park over there. You can walk all through downtown Norfolk. It's a great spot that you can get access to all these places pretty easily. And even if you lived in downtown Norfolk and wanted to go to Ghent or vice versa, it could take anywhere from 10 to 15-ish minutes to walk from one side to the other. Awesome music museums in just around downtown Norfolk. For example, the Chrysler Museum of Art. There's a glass blowing museum too, which is pretty cool. The Hermitage, the Chrysler Hall in Scope. There are a lot of events that happen in Scope as well as the Norfolk Admirals, the minor league hockey team I talked to you about before. The Norva, which is one of my favorite uh, music venues in the entire area, which is right across the street from uh, MacArthur Center Mall. I remember being in line for all kinds of concerts for tickets uh, back in the 90s, 2000s, even recently. I love going to the Norva and also so in Ghent, you've got the Nero, which is an old school theater. It plays lots of uh, independent films. Great coffee shops like Coalescence, The Cure, uh, which is in downtown Norfolk. Lots of good breweries. O'Connor's a good one. Benchtop, uh, Elevation, Rip Rap, uh, Maker's Craft, Kova, Bold Mariner. There's all kinds of breweries in Norfolk. And so it really adds to the cool evening and night vibe that you can get, not just in downtown Norfolk, but even outside of there. And in the West Ghent side, one of my favorite restaurants is the Birch. This is one of the, the top ranked places to get a beer in the entire world. I'm not kidding you. It's awesome. It's a great place to get a real nice, like a, a beer that you might not have ever heard of before. They put all their beers on a chalkboard and they change it all the time. Uh, it's a real small place and you can get food there and there's a nice little pizza place next door uh, also. It's really cool. It's, it's, that's in West Ghent. I mentioned Scope before. There's a lot of other good concerts in, at Scope. Uh, comedians and performing artists. It looks like a weird spaceship, uh, but it's, it's kind of old and looks dirty on the outside but it's, it's cool for the location and what it does bring to the area. And then another area just north of downtown, which is called the Neon District. It looks like it's more of an industrial, kind of a, it was kind of a commercial industrial area for a while, but just right off of an uh, area called Granby Street, you'll see little shops are popping up. A great restaurant called Zeke's Beans and Bowls is on this uh, section in the Vibe District. You'll see like murals that are really cool on the walls. It's a very cool little vibe in this little corner, and it's kind of an up and coming little scene. So this area, downtown west side is seeped in culture, lots of cool arts, lots of cool just vibes. In general, you can walk through Ghent. Ghent has the, some of the best architecture and houses anywhere, I would say, in the entire state, in my opinion, but I love Ghent. There's also the Elizabeth River Trail that goes all the way from the south and southeastern corner of uh, Norfolk, all the way through through the south part of downtown Norfolk and up towards the southeast, southwestern corner of Ghent. Also pretty cool too, so a lot of options for walking. My wife and I would love to just go down into Ghent, for, for example, and just walk through and stop at shops and stop at a restaurant. And just in general, there's lots of festivals in the, in the city. For example, I love going to the Greek 
Festival, which happens on Granby Street, up in the north side of Granby Street. But festivals like the Town Point Park, you had wine and beer festivals that are really cool on that, that green area lot near the water. As well as Waterside itself, which is next to that. Lots more events and lots more restaurants in there that was rebuilt. It was a kind of a drab spot, but it got rebuilt recently with new uh, stuff, new restaurants. It's all on the water. It's a pretty prime spot between Harbor Park and uh, Town Point Park. And of course, the restaurant scene. There's a ton of great stuff in downtown Norfolk. Uh, Bird and Baldwin is real expensive, but exceptional, exceptional. Some of my favorites also are uh, No Frill Bar and Grill over in Ghent, as well as uh, Mr. Shorma, a Mediterranean street food place that we love. Uh, one of my favorite sushi, sushi places is Volcano Sushi. Uh, it's an all you can eat, which I'm usually really particular about uh, because I think a lot of all you can eat places have terrible sushi. This one actually has really good sushi. 80-20 burger bars on 21st Street too. There's a cool wine bar, Press 626 in Ghent. And also Jack Brown's Burgers is, oh yeah. But there's there's restaurants everywhere. There's restaurants in Waterside, West restaurants in Ghent. Uh, you got this, the, the scene is vibrant in Norfolk, as well as up Granby Street. Got lots of nightlife up there. There's the whole scene and feel of Norfolk is unlike anything else, anywhere else in the area. The next is specifically about a library. It's not just any library. This is downtown Norfolk, the Slover Library. One of my favorite, I love this library. This is an over $50 million renovated uh, library in downtown Norfolk. It is amazing. Seven stories, I think it's seven stories. Um, there is a whole section, it's a whole story for kids. Um, great uh, activities for kids, uh, things to do, craft nights, there's like family movie nights. They have 3D printers you can use, recording studios, which I've used before. Um, they do an awesome job. It actually, it's worth going to just because you can want to experience the library. Not to mention the fact that they have lots of books. Now next is the really high demand uh, private school systems here. So you've got uh, Norfolk Academy, Norfolk Christian, Norfolk Collegiate. Those are the three primary ones. There are some others, but they are extremely in high demand. Not just because people that are in Norfolk want to uh, go there as well, but there are places, people all across the area that will bring their kids to these uh, private, private schools. You can do some research and find out how in demand that they are. They have a little bit of a range of cost too, but uh, Norfolk Christian also has two campuses. We have some minor league sports and college sports that is, for me, looking for any sort of sports that I can, can get a hold of live, I'll take it. I love it. And so, Norfolk Tides, uh, AAA baseball team, Norfolk Admirals, minor league hockey team, as well as the Old Dominion Monarchs has a Div Division I football program that has gotten pretty good. Um, they were, originally, they weren't that great. They started recently, only a few years ago, but they've gotten pretty good, uh, and they're definitely worth watching, and they just built a new stadium over there near the school. I love going over there. It's the closest to kind of tailgate football experience that we have in this area. And I'll, again, like I said, I'll take it. Another one I say is a positive, but can also be a little bit of a negative, the Norfolk Tide. It's not the Norfolk Tides, the Tide. This is a, a light rail system that goes from the uh, south and southeastern section of Norfolk all the way across to the southwestern section of Norfolk through to north, towards Ghent. The great thing about this is that for day pass is only 440 and half a day is 225. So it's not too bad as far as cost goes. The drawback is it depends on where you need to go will influence if if you actually need it or not. For example, if, it, if it'll take you right through downtown Norfolk uh, and it will take you all the way towards Ghent, but where it drops you off in Ghent, it's on the south side of Ghent, so you have to still walk a ways further north, so it's not super convenient. But it tries to go along about the south side. It'll drop you off at, at Harbor Park where the, the tides, Norfolk tides play, uh, and in, straight in, in downtown Norfolk too. So it does have some good stopping points, but at the same time, it's not super convenient. It doesn't take you all through Norfolk, for example. Another thing is the beaches are usually less crowded than Virginia Beach. You hear all about Virginia Beach and all the beaches and oh, I want to go to the ocean front. And you know, there's a lot of talk about the, the beaches over there, Sandbridge, Croatan. But with Norfolk, there are beaches here too and they're not as crowded. Ocean View is the one that I would say that there's a lot of talk about Ocean View because it's near areas that aren't as uh, high value in prices. It's not as high demand area. It's not, it's not as nice in a lot of places, but it's getting developed. You'll see a lot of million dollar houses on the ocean and in East Beach, which is a really popular area on this Ocean View side. Uh, but the beaches here are a lot quieter and you can get more access to beach without having to go all the way to Virginia Beach and deal with a lot more people. So if you do like that, this is a good place to go to. And you're close to uh, Chicks Beach, which is technically in Virginia Beach, but it's right down the street from Norfolk. This is also a more private beach, more in demand, but it's another option for you too. Next is the proximity to the, the military bases on the north side. For example, Little Creek Amphibious Base and going west, Norfolk NOB, both of those are kind of 
they're, they're due west of each other almost. There are a lot of parts of Norfolk that are pretty close to there. And you could be, you know, within a couple minutes drive in some spots of Gates, or you could be several 10, 15 minutes away as well. In Norfolk, there are lots of places that you could be 10 or 15 minutes or less away from those places uh, and also find a good house too. Next, let's shift over just to the east side and look at the Norfolk Premium Outlets. They've only been open for a few years, but real nice, lots of uh, stores you might be uh, used to, for example, uh, the Nikes of the world. The stores you see in outlets, ton of stores and stuff to do outside. So this is probably the best shopping experience, I think, anywhere in the city of Norfolk, now that MacArthur Center is not MacArthur Center as much anymore. And Chick-fil-A's, if you love Chick-fil-A's, there's one new one right not near the uh, premium outlets, right in front. A couple small things. For example, you're pretty conveniently uh, uh, located close to the Norfolk International Airport. You're about anywhere from five, 10, 20 minutes away in a lot of places uh, to the airport, but it takes you all across the country. And also if you like the yachts and country clubs, the Norfolk Yacht Club is close to the Old Dominion University and the Norfolk Navy Base NOB. So if you're interested in that. Another one that's really specific that I think is important is that the dealing with the city of Norfolk can be a little bit of a pain. And for example, DMV, going to the city to get something done. Dealing with Norfolk for property taxes, the social security office. Comparing it to like, for example, Virginia Beach, it's just a little bit more of a hassle. Like, how you go through their processes. So it may not be a big deal for you, but it could be and it's something that's worth considering. Now, if you want to learn more about living in Norfolk or the areas around here, I've got more uh, videos here. You can click here as well as subscribe to my channel and I do videos every week. And if you have any questions about living or moving to this area, I'll drop my contact information below. You can ask me anytime. I'll do whatever I can to help you relocate into Norfolk or the areas around here. And I will see you on the next video.